Luke has a question. I just finished That All Shall Be Saved by David Bentley Hart. I'm curious about Dr. Mike's take on hell not being eternal, but instead a temporary refining period to get us all back to God eventually. Temporary meaning Hitler will probably do more time than your atheist grandma or something. God bless you all. Yeah, I, I think it's nonsense. I mean, I, you know, I, and I'm not trying to be harsh there because I have friends who are universalists like, you know, David. I think, do I want to use the the name? The guy who wrote the Evangelical Universalist. So I don't know if I need to use his real, Robin Perry is his real name. I think he has published that. Um, so, I mean, you know, we, we've we've interviewed him. I, we interviewed him once, one of these SBL years, you know. So I, I have friends who are universalists, but I'm just not buying it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it's funny how universalist talk doesn't include the Old Testament, for one thing. So we've got, you know, the, the Kerem Wars, you know, the wars against the giant clans, and those those individuals are still called people, even though they're, you know, they're they have the, the the bloodline, you know, back to before the flood and all that. You know, you have Baal worshippers. You know, I mean, re- rejecting, you know, God in the Old Testament. You know, there was a heavy price to pay, and there's no talk. I don't, and I would say there's no seeding talk of universalist, you know, outcomes. So, you know, it's funny to me how universalists don't include the Old Testament, and then they want to affirm, though, on the other side, that we have the same God of the Old Testament as in the New. Well, you can't have both. You can't have that cake and eat it, too. Uh, If we have the same God and the same trajectories for salvation history, then I think you're seeing something on the other end that it really is not at all evident uh, elsewhere. And And I think it's I think that there has some real weaknesses, you know, in the New Testament too. You know, why why is the writer of Hebrews worried about unbelief and falling away? Uh, he's just worried about them spending extra time in hell. Well, then why doesn't why doesn't he say that? You know, why give the Great Commission? Everybody's going to get there anyway. I mean, why write John three eighteen or John three thirty six? You know, John three eighteen. This is the two verses after John three sixteen, with the Universalist, of course, is going to want to affirm. You know, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, in John 3.36. Let me just click out to that so I don't get it wrong. John 3.36 says this, Whoever believes in the Son is eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. Oops. But the wrath of God remains on him. That's not a very good universalist verse you know, shall not see life, and the wrath of God remains on him. So universalism just, I mean, I'm just, these are just, you know, isolated verses because we got to do this quickly, but it it just doesn't make sense to me. So I realize you can do, you know, lots of logical argumentation and say this or that, and it all looks beautiful, except, you know, again, when you probe it. So it's just, universalism to me is like a soteriological system, kind of like people come up with eschatological systems. They're all beautiful, but they all cheat somewhere and, you know, relegate data that are, are problematic, you know, to, you know, some place where people can't see those data or they will put, you know, some kind of spin on them to make them not say what they seem to plainly say. Just like John 3.36. So anyway, I'm not buying it. 